Sunday School, October 10th, 2021. Today's lesson, Sure of Salvation. This is the sixth and final lesson in our series from 1 John about things we can be certain of. And this comes from select verses found in the fifth chapter of the first epistle of John. Now John wrote this letter a long time ago to dispel delusions and to make sure that born-again Christians could know some things far certain without doubt. In fact, he goes so far as to say, this is why I'm writing these things to you. One thing's for sure, if you don't have love in your heart for your fellow human beings, then you don't love God either. We talked about that last week. Well, this week, we address the fact that some Christians are not certain of their salvation. And sometimes, if other people look at us, they might wonder. So, we provide evidence to ourselves and to anybody who might be watching, that we are, in fact, a born-again child of God, a true believer. Whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. Whoever believes that he is the Messiah, the Anointed One, the only begotten Son of Almighty God, whoever believes that Jesus is, is the Christ, is born again, saved. So a new birth occurs. A new creature is created when we place our trust and our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, born again. That also is the time that we receive the Holy Spirit, And the Holy Spirit enables us to love God more and to love our fellow human beings more. Everyone who loves the Father also loves the Son. By this we know. We know we love God and the children of God, others, when we obey His commands. So this is the love of God, or proof of the love of God. We keep his commandments. And furthermore, keeping his commandments are not a bother to us. They're not grievous. They're not burdensome. And the Holy Spirit makes that possible. And having the Holy Spirit is further evidence of the fact that we are, in fact, saved. Jesus said, I have overcome the world. And here in 1 John we read that if you are a child of God, born of God, born again, a believer in Christ, then you too have overcome the world. Regardless of whether you feel victorious or not, ultimately you've already won because you have Jesus. And John tells us, Faith, our faith, is the victory that overcomes the world. And again he writes, Those who believe that Jesus is the Son of God overcome the world. God has given us eternal life. And this life is through his Son Jesus and in his Son Jesus. John says, those who have the Son have life, and those who don't have the Son do not have life. In chapter 5, verse 13, John writes, I have written these things to you who believe on the name of the Son of God, that you will know that you have eternal life, and that you all may believe. Let's look at that again. If you believe in Jesus, you have eternal life. That is something to rejoice about. 
John tells us that whoever is born of God does not continue in sin. Yes, we're still sinners. We're still going to make mistakes. The difference is a born-again Christian is not going to continue to follow in the same old sinful lifestyle they ran before. They are going to be trying to become more and more like Jesus. Paraphrasing the rest of verse 18, born-again Christians guard themselves against the effects of the wicked one. It's hard for the devil to have power over a Christian who is so much connected to Jesus that they continually guard themselves against temptation. Now, we know that we are of God, and John mentions that here, but then in the same verse, he reminds us that though we know that we're of God and we get some peace and joy from that, we're still living in, surrounded by a world that is totally under the influence of wickedness. So how do we not despair being children of God in a world that's in such a state of depravity? Well, in the next verse, John says, We know, remember this, that the Son of God is with us, giving us understanding to recognize the truth. Jesus is true. Jesus is eternal life. Everything else that's contrary to Jesus is a lie. Everything contrary to Jesus is a culture of death, destruction, and eternal doom. And John, that old apostle, finishes this letter telling those he refers to as dear children, Guard yourselves from things that are false. Now here are the action points to take away from this lesson. Number one, evaluate your life. Are you living a life of faith, love, and obeying God's commands? Number two, be a faithful witness for the Lord, for others to see and hear the gospel. And number three, lead others to Christ. Be intentional about it. Lord, strengthen our faith, assure us of our salvation, and help us to lead others into that salvation. In Jesus' name, amen. Faith is the victory. Faith is the victory. Faith is the victory that overcomes the world.